guys hear me? So thank you. So we had the two speakers before me talk about software and AI, and I will speak about hardware, because you need hardware for the software to run. And I represent Infineon. We are the largest uh, semiconductor manufacturer for automotive space in the world. And today I will talk about uh, more about the smart solutions and what the evolution is happening mainly in the passenger vehicle space. So, if we look at it today, right, what is the EE, which is the basically the electric and electronic architecture comprised of? Mainly two things, actually three. Uh, the earlier speakers talked about SDV, but if I look at mainly from the hardware point of view, in-vehicle network, and the power distribution system. Okay, what is in-vehicle network? Basically supporting communication or facilitating communication between the various applications. And if you look at the PDS, the one that powers up all the different systems in your vehicle. So these are essentially two things that are very important for designing and development of your e-architecture in all vehicles. Okay. Now let's just talk about you know, the power distribution point of view. You know, if you look at it here, you have, okay, it doesn't work on this. So if you look at it, you, know, you have the DCU, and then what are the various aspects? One, what you're looking at today in terms of your e-architecture is one is reducing your hardware complexity, and very importantly, also your software complexity reduction. Uh, Lata just talked about millions of lines of code and essentially now this is has to be reduced. And as a result of which, the new e-architectures that are coming into the market are essentially helping this. So what are these things in terms of e-architecture? Two very important things. One is the zonal and the decentralized power distribution systems are the ones that we actually see driving a lot of these new e-architectures in vehicles. Similarly, let's talk about in-vehicle you know, network from a customer point of view. Very similar here too. What is driving again is zone architecture and decentralized power distribution system. My presentation today, I'll speak about this and kind of adhere to a lot of the topics that we are seeing in terms of changes. Also, what is driving this and where we see this going. Maybe from an Indian context, uh, not a lot of this is happening today, which is definitely we have started to see in some new vehicles that are coming in. You know, one you can talk about is, uh, if you talk about an Indian OEM, Mahindra, coming up with, uh, I wouldn't say full zonal, but kind of partial zonal architecture in their new vehicles that we are seeing. Tata also planning. Global customers already have them, but we are seeing that come in today. And essentially, we've learned a lot because we've worked with them directly now and learned about the requirements and what they need and how things actually work. So, if we look at in terms of, uh, you know, both of these kind of coexist, right? In terms of both what we're talking of, uh, power distribution systems and in vehicle network. If you look at it, first generation, a centralized power distribution. More like a tree or a star architecture which we started off with, where we're then seeing it go towards a partially decentralized power distribution system. And where we expect to get in Gen 3 is a completely decentralized power distribution system. In the following slides, I'll adhere to and show you information of what this is and what this really helps with. But what we are seeing is in terms of power distribution system is moving towards more decentralization. But on the other hand, in terms of in-vehicle network, okay, what we saw initially is domain architecture. You had specific domains for telematics, or infotainment, ADAS, body. And then what we see that transition is to zonal. You know, we go to a hybrid first, which is mainly a mixed domain and a zone. Certain peripherals would essentially have a central issue and other would go into a zonal architecture. Finally, where we want to get to is a complete full car computer. And what you see is two different things here. If you look at in terms of power distribution, decentralization, but if you talk in terms of vehicle network, it's more about centralization. So both of them go in kind of the opposite directions that you actually see things moving. 
Now let's look at, you know, what does zonal architecture really, what are the advantages it offers over what we have today in most of the vehicles in terms of domain. First is uh, with zonal, one is lack of segmentation, scalability and flexibility. With people wanting to have time to market a passenger vehicle within one year to two years versus what we had four to five years earlier, it becomes very difficult to stay with domain and have to come up with a new vehicle architecture in every few years. So there you have zonal which gives you zonal isolation, helps you with modularity. You know, you basically bunch of, make a bunch of modules and put them together. And most importantly, scalability, which is, I think, an essence of things today. Also with domain, you have very complex network topology. And I can tell you a very simple thing today. You have hybrids, right? You have a bunch of systems in your vehicle running on 12 volts and then some on 48 volts. Integrating them with DC-DC is not easy. It leads to a, a lot of complexity and also cost because that's also a big driver today. Nobody wants to buy an electric vehicle 2x times the price of a conventional ICE. So this is what we are also seeing. And by going to zonal, it helps simplify the architecture and also helps reduce hardware complexity. Then also in terms of difficulty in monitoring and response to cyber threats. And uh, this is something you have. I know a couple of the speakers adhere to of cyber security. And this is very important with over the air updates, as well as a lot of connectivity with V2X that we are seeing in vehicles today. This becomes very important. And by going to a zonal, it also helps enhance the cyber security that you could offer with the various vehicles that you can. Then also in terms of uh, you know, future service-oriented architecture because of what we talked about, modularity, scalability, as well as simplified, it helps enhance what you can offer to your customers. And most importantly, right, with electrification, you want to reduce the size of battery. You want to have the vehicles go a larger distance before discharge. And then one of the important things is weight reduction. There is a lot of weight reduction that's happening on the mechanical side. But if you look at the number of amount of wiring harness in a vehicle, it's not just wiring harnesses, right? If you're trying to connect them, it's also a lot of connectors and a lot of uh, mechanical components that you have to add in order for routing of your wiring harnesses. So this also helps. And one good example I can talk about is, uh, and one of the, uh, you know, speakers adhere to is uh, wireless BMS, okay? When you're talking of wireless BMS, if you look at an actual BMS, look at the amount of wiring that go from each cell to cell. And essentially, with a wireless BMS, you're able to reduce a lot of these cabling in the, you know, between the various cells of the battery. For example, just take a two-wheeler, right? Uh, you know, you take a TVS uh, iCube, there are about 168 cells in one single three kilowatt BMS. And just look at the complexity you have with a passenger car. It's much more significant than what you see with this. Now, in terms of uh, the various automotive megatrends that are actually driving a lot of this e-architecture. First thing we talked about SDV. I won't go much into it. But if you look at ADAS or drive-by-wire and electromobility, as we're transitioning, you know, from a mild hybrid to a complete battery vehicle or, you know, level zero of ADAS to level four or five. Yes, definitely where we are, we're going to end up, majority of the market is probably going to be the level two plus, not the level zero, not the level three or four, which are going to be very niche markets like Waymo or somebody out in San Francisco. But what this is actually helping in terms of vehicle networking is one, giving you more dependable electronics because reliability today is a very significant part. I don't think a lot of us want to hear what Ola is happening out in the market. We don't want that. Then, you know, fail safe or fail operational. Availability and most importantly, functional safety. I think that's what uh, the other speakers actually adhere to. So this is where we are seeing things go. And how do you get there and what are things happening? For example, if you look at the first one, right? Software complexity reduction is very important. 
The new zonal architecture, the new architecture with zonal actually helps you with this. We already talked about this. Wire harness complexity reduction, okay? Decentralized and electrified power systems and zone controllers. So you basically reduce the complexity, modularity, and helps you with scaling up. Then, you know, safety elements that actually can be introduced into your system, okay? Because today, two-wheelers, we really don't have much of an SL, but if you look at electric vehicles today, BMS all need an SLD, and then you look at, uh, you know, inverters, and a lot of applications, we're still in India able to go away with SLB. But we are going to see with, you know, more complex networks, the need to go to this. And this is essentially where the new e-architecture would actually come in to help. Then other one is uh, higher power capacity, transitioning away to a complete 48 volt system. And this is what we are seeing essentially help driving efficiencies, also basically help reducing the size that we are actually seeing, now we are seeing with the Cybertruck of Tesla, and this is what we're gonna see also with uh, multiple other customers that are gonna actually go in into these kind of systems. So this is essentially where the e-architecture transformation in the automotive space, in line with the mega trends that we are seeing, you know, SDV, or in terms of ADAS, and thirdly, in terms of e-mobility or electrification, where the e-architecture is gonna play a major role Definitely we are seeing this transition, and uh, very importantly, right, it's not happening in a night. It takes time, because completely to tear up your architecture in your car or vehicle, it's a lot of money, it's a lot of time, a lot of development. And this is where a lot of it is controlled by the OEMs. The OEMs are working, and this is where we, as a semiconductor manufacturer today, are interfacing directly with them to understand their needs or what they need in terms of development. Yes, I worked all my life in tier ones, but I do understand where the tier ones are now coming in and then squeeze between us as well as the OEMs. Okay, and what we see here is, and I went through a lot of this, right? You know, in terms of you're looking today, is you're looking for high performance computing. What does this do with zonal? It increases need for processors more than just going for microcontrollers. Then you also look at uh, safety. You also look at a lot of control. You know, it's both sense, act, and control, which are basically things that come in. Then integrating a lot of complex sensors. You don't need to redevelop a system to be able to integrate. So you get the ability to scale. And most importantly, a lot of it now is getting, you know, everything you want and everything people want, the expectation of things being smart, right? And this is what the new e-architecture would actually help drive you to get to these smart systems. Because today, I remember, you know, the first car I bought, I didn't have power windows, I didn't have power locks, and yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, and I can tell you, there was not even an infotainment system. It had to buy aftermarket that you had to install. But if you look at today's cars, right, everything is powered. I don't think anyone in this room today is gonna go buy a car without all of these. And once you have that, what do you want? You wanna have these smart systems where the instant it recognizes who you are, it basically has to have the setup that your preference would actually call for. And that's where a lot of these systems come in. And this is basically all the electronics that goes behind ensuring this. Definitely a lot of software, but you still need the hardware to run this. Finally, I just want to talk about, you know, the e-architecture is evolving. Zonal today, what we see is the most promising one. Is that the last? No. Definitely there is a lot more going to come in. Software is defining, doing the differentiation between different manufacturers. And this plays a large role. And essentially, towards centralized software, where you're able to control various functions. It's a process. It's gonna take several steps. It's not gonna happen overnight. And definitely, we are making small steps. And very positively, I can tell you, interfacing with a lot of the Indian OEMs, we are seeing a lot of them taking significant steps towards doing this in the market. And also, what we are seeing is uh, 
a lot of it driven by the OEMs, guidance and support to help with the right partitioning. And definitely, as a semiconductor manufacturer, we are there to help you with your partitioning, help you with your layouts, helping you with your schematics, and choosing the right devices, the right platforms to help you drive you know, the next generation of e-architecture. So that's all I had. Thank you.